how to create fave icons for your website uh, directly from a Figma project. Um, so the first step, if you haven't uh, already installed it, uh, we're going to download a plugin called Favi. So if you click on the Figma logo up the top here and then click on plugins and then go to browse all plugins, you'll see uh, the search bar up the top. So search for Favi, which is F-A-V-V-Y. And if you haven't installed it, you'll see a button that says install. Uh, I've already installed it, so that's why mine looks like that. Uh, but once you've clicked install, uh, you can jump back to your project and you'll immediately have access to Favi in your plugins panel. So to access that, uh, you just right click anywhere on the page, go to plugins, hover over that, and then you'll see Favi Fav icon exporter. So that's the one we're going to click on. So you can see here that uh, there's only a few things we need to pay attention to. There's the uh, empty placeholder state, which is telling us to select a single square layer. And it's recommending that that should be at least 512 by 512 um, in dimension. And then there's a couple of fields over here. One is for website name and the other one is for theme color. So perhaps if we just select uh, one of the frames that we've got set up here, uh, so for example, we can select this, uh, the Favi icon. And by clicking that, you can see it's immediately giving us a bit of a preview of how that icon might look at different icon sizes, uh, different Fav icon sizes that different websites and different apps will actually use. Um, so for example, this one up the top is the 16 by 16. So that's one that you might see in a Chrome uh, tab or Chrome toolbar. This is 32 by 32. This one's 64 by 64 and 150 by 150, which is used for things like iOS devices and things like that. Um, so it just gives a little bit of a snapshot um, up front of how that might actually look and scale across different sizes. Um, and if we change the layer, uh, you can see here that it immediately reflects that change in the preview panel in Favi. So we can, we can switch between these and it'll just keep switching uh, the preview as well. Um, so let's try exporting this one just as a test. So the website name field is actually um, uh, where you can put the name of your site. So this will show up in certain um, certain applications. For example, if you're building a progressive web app and uh, somebody saves the, the website or the app to their desktop, um, sometimes this is used as a name reference. So I'd keep this pretty short and uh, I would just give it the name of the website without any extra title or anything like that. Um, and then the theme color, this is also something that's used by certain browsers. So if you've noticed on, um, if you use Chrome, for example, on your mobile device, uh, on Android, um, you'll notice that sometimes the, the Chrome area of the actual, where the URL bar is and where all the controls are at the top of the, the browser, um, Sometimes when you visit certain websites, you'll notice that that color changes. And um, so setting this hex value here is going to influence uh, what that looks like. So um, by default, we can just leave it as uh, white. So if we pop in um, the white uh, hex value, which it will default to anyway, if you actually don't include a value. Um, so you can leave that out. Uh, likewise with the website name, these are both optional. Um, but for now, I'm just going to export them with... Uh, the two fields filled out and using the doge uh, icon. So I'm just going to click export fave icons and you can see it's, it's already finished. It's ultra quick. It takes um, less than a second to do all, all of the work. And up here you can see we're being prompted to save a zip file. So um, by default, this is named as Favi with today's date and the time, just so it doesn't conflict with um, if you're exporting a few different ones to try different uh, designs out. Um, so you can rename that. So I might actually just rename, rename that one and I'll just call it Doge. So we'll save that to the desktop. Um, and then the other thing that we've got is uh, a little snippet of HTML, which we can use in our own website. So uh, there's a little button here to copy that HTML if we like. So I'm going to copy that HTML by clicking the button. So it's telling us that the HTML has been copied to the clipboard. Um, so 
what we can do is now have a look at what that actually generated. So you can see here, we've got our zip file that we just saved. So I'm just gonna double click on that. And I'm just gonna open this folder. And you can see here, we've got a whole bunch of files and I'm just gonna go through them. So we've got uh, the Android Chrome 192 by 192, Android Chrome 512, uh, the Apple Touch icon. Uh, we've got a browser config file, uh, which is used for um, Microsoft. And uh, this is the 16 by 16 uh, PNG, 32 by 32 PNG. Uh, this is the sort of old school, but still necessary um, favicon.ico. So this is kind of the default uh, fav icon that a web server will look for. Um, and there's multiple image sizes embedded in this ICO file actually. So um, that's a really good one to have. And the MS tile is again used for um, uh, certain Microsoft applications. And finally, we've got the uh, web manifest file, which is used for uh, progressive, web, uh, progressive web apps or PWAs, as I mentioned before. So. Uh, what we can do is we can actually take uh, these files and uh, we can use them in a website that uh, I've kind of uh, just thrown together. Well, it's just a, it's a very simple HTML file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my website folder. Um, so this is the example I've created. I've already got an index.html file in there and I'll open up my editor as well, just so you can see that. So what I'm gonna do, I've just copied all those files and now I'm gonna paste them into this folder so all of them go into the root of the project folder. And so what I can do is I've already copied this HTML uh, to my clipboard. Um, if you haven't, that's totally fine. Uh, it also, the zip also includes a file called head.html, which has exactly the same content. Um, but sometimes it's easier just to uh, click that button to copy it straight away, which I've just done. So I'm gonna drop that in there. So I've just pasted all of the stuff that I got from the clipboard in Figma. Uh, I've just dropped that directly in my head tag uh, in my sample index.html file. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up this file locally uh, just to show you what it looks like. So you can see here, I've got um, my fav icon example page, uh, which I've just loaded up, which is the one we're looking at in the editor window here. And you can notice up the top, there's a fav icon and it's our little doge that we uh, exported a second ago. So that's, that's all working as expected. And uh, so we can see in here, it's linking to all of our, all of our icons, our little web, web manifest. And to see what's inside of that, uh, I'll open it up in, in my code editor. So this is the site.web manifest file. So you can see here, it's taken what we put in from the Figma input, so uh, Favi and uh, our color scheme. So we just put the, the hex code for, for white. Uh, so it's put that in as the theme color. And the other file it's generated is the browser config file, uh, which is pointing to the uh, MS tile file, which we've also generated here. And it's also taken that color value and set it as the tile color. So uh, the plugin has done all of this work for us. We didn't have to generate any image sizes. Uh, we didn't have to export any images manually. And all of the code has been generated for us. All of the files have been generated for us. Um, so it really is as simple as dropping all of the generated files into the root of your project directory. Um, you can actually delete this head file if you're finished with it. Um, that's more of just a thing in case you forgot to copy it from uh, Figma when it generated. So you can you can actually delete that if you like. Um, it doesn't really matter if it's there, but uh, I'll just delete that. Um, so that's that's as simple as it as it is to generate these files. Um, there's a couple other things we can do. So if we close this off again, uh, so this one that we've just done is a uh, a transparent uh, frame. So this is just an SVG file that I've dropped in. Um, but sometimes you might want to have a background and you might want to have uh, something that's not totally transparent. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've just grabbed a frame, uh, just a regular frame in Figma. Um, so I'm just going to um, draw that out and I might as well just set it as 512 by 512. So this is my new icon. And what I can do is I'll, I'll grab this other icon and I'll pop it in there. So 
if we want to have um, a background on this icon or even have some padding on this icon, uh, what we can do is we can select the icon inside of the frame. So that's nested inside of the, the parent frame now. And I'm just going to give it 24 pixels roughly of padding around the edges, just so it's not completely flush with the sides um, because I'm going to add a background color and it might look a little bit weird if it has um, no space around it. Um, so what I can do is I can click on the frame. I can go to the fill over here. So I've got the fill property. Currently it's just set to white, um, but I'm going to grab the color picker and I'm actually going to grab this pink color and, um, and I'm just going to shift that a little bit to be a slightly different shade. So, so if I set it like that, so now the frame um, that the icon is sitting in has a background color. And now what we can do, instead of clicking on the, the SVG of the icon itself, I'm just going to click on the frame and rerun the plugin. So plugins, Favi, Favor, Icon Exporter. And you can see here it's, it's taken um, our selection of the parent frame and now it's showing us a preview of what it's going to look like with that background color. Um, so if I re-export that now, and I'm actually going to grab uh, this background color. So I'm going to grab the fill, copy that X value, and I'm going to drop it into here. And so this is going to be now used as our uh, theme color in uh, the progressive web app file and that other file that it's generating. So I'm just going to re-export that now, click the button, and so this is our new one. So this is the Fabi icon. So I'll export him to desktop. And once again, um, it gives us the option to copy the HTML. Um, however, because I've already got the HTML in here, I don't need to re recopy and paste that. All the file names are exactly the same. Uh, so it makes it really easy just to find and replace uh, those files every time. So what I can do is check out my new zip file that I just saved. So this is the Favi file. I can grab all of these files. I'm not going to include the head file um, this time because I, I don't really need it because I've already got that content. Um, I'm going to copy these files, go back to my website, paste, and then I'm just going to replace all of those. So they've all just been replaced. So now if I go back to my browser, I'm just going to hit refresh. And you can see it's immediately updated my fav icon to use the new one that we've just exported. So this is just a really easy way to um, create and export fav icons directly from Figma. Um, as you saw, it takes less than a second every time. So the cost of retrying uh, is very low. Um, and hopefully seeing that preview in uh, Favi, the Favi plugin itself um, is a really good way to save time by needing to re-export and constantly checking what it's going to look like at different sizes. Um, so that's that's roughly the tutorial for Favi. Um, of course, this is going to differ depending on what kind of website you're using um, uh, in terms of uh, what templating language you might be using. So you might want to uh, create um, a different file just for your Fav icon code. Um, but really, it's it's pretty much the same for uh, any website. As long as this code here is um, is getting rendered in your head tag, and as long as these paths are referencing the files that you've um, generated, then that's all you really need to worry about, um, and you should be good to go. So I hope this has been a valuable tutorial um, for anyone who's been uh, wondering how you can uh, design and export fav icons from Figma. Um, I guess the answer is you haven't been able to um, without using this plugin. So uh, if this is something that you need to do at your agency or need to do um, just for your own little side projects, uh, I would say this is um, by far the quickest and easiest way uh, to get uh, fav icons exported directly from Figma. So uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to me via the links in the description. Um, but until then, I hope you enjoy the plugin and uh, looking forward to giving uh, more of these tutorials uh, in the future. Thanks for watching.